Hello there. And in this video we're going to look at rounding and estimating. We're often asked in exams or tests to find a rough answer or an estimate of a calculation such as this. How do we find that rough answer, that estimate? Well first we round each of the numbers involved. And we round it to one significant figure. How do we do that? Well, we get rid of everything other than the first figure. Now, that 2 was in the hundreds column. So I need two zeros to pad it out and push the 2 into the hundreds column. What about this 18 here? I get rid of all the other figures. But if the first figure you get rid of is 5 or more, then the one you keep goes up by 1. So it goes up to 2. But that 1 was in the tens column. So our 2 should be in the tens column. So we add a 0 to push the 2 to the left into the tens column. Now we quickly do the calculation 200 times 20. Multiply the first two figures together. That's 4. Then count the zeros. How many zeros have we got in the whole question? I've got three zeros. So my answer requires three zeros. So the estimate, the rough answer, is 4,000. See that again. Question two. Five hundred seventy-one times thirty-four. What's the estimate, the rough answer of that? Well, first we round them. So I'm going to keep the first figure, the first non-zero figure, and get rid of all the others. Here, the first figure I crossed out was a seven. So that five becomes one higher, a six. But the five was in the hundreds column. So I've got to add two zeros. Let's round the 34 to one significant figure. Keep that three, get rid of all the other figures. Oh, the figure I got rid of first was a four, so this three doesn't change. But it was in the tens column, so I need another zero. Now I do this calculation. Six times three is 18. Now I count the zeros. I've got one, two, three in the whole question. So I need three in the answer. And put a comma every group of three figures from the right. What about division? Well, it's slightly more involved. Let's look at this one here. 786 divided by 43. Now, we start by rounding. So that's the figure I'm going to keep, the first on zero. Oh, the first figure across that was eight. So the seven goes up by one. But it was in the hundreds column. So I add two zeros to make sure the eight is now in the third place, the third column from the right. Divided by, what do I round 43 to? I round it to 40. Why? I crossed out a three, so the four's unchanged, but it was in the tens column, so I've got to add a zero to push the four into the second column to the right. Now we write it as a fraction. Then all we have to do is simplify it. To simplify a fraction, we divide by the common factors. Now, the simplest way of doing it, with well, there's lots of zeros, is to cross out a zero on the top for one on the bottom. So my answer becomes 80 over 4. Let's check. Can I simplify that any further? Yes. 4 will go into both. So we get 80 over 1. That's my mistake. 20 over 1 or 20. Any fraction, improper fraction over 1, you just write as a whole number, the whole number being the numerator. Let's look at that again. Question 4. 941 divided by 58. So first we round them to one significant figure. So we keep the first non-zero, get rid of all the others. The first one I crossed out here was a 4, so that 9 remains unchanged, but it was in the hundreds column, so I add two zeros. Now we're going to round 58. Get rid of all the other figures. Oh, that was an 8 I crossed out, so the 5 goes up by 1. Remember, if the first figure you cross out is 5 or more, the number you keep goes up by 1. But that 5 was in the tens column, so the 6 needs to be in the tens column, so we add a 0. So we write that as a fraction. 
Now, let's cancel 0 on the top for 1 on the bottom to give us 90 over 6. What's the highest common factor of 90 and 6? Six? 6 will go into both to give me 15 over 1 or 15. If you wanted to, when you get to this stage here, if you're not sure, you might want to try doing long division. 6 into uh, 9 goes once, remainder 3, 6 is into 30, go 5. It's sometimes quicker to get the answer that way. Well, let's try one more. Question 5. 0 0.76 times 468. Well, first we round. Now, we round to the one significant place, or one significant figure. So we get rid of all the others. I got rid of a 6. The first figure I crossed out, so the 7 goes up by 1, becoming an 8. So it's 0 0.8. Notice I didn't have to add any zeros, because the 8 was in the same column, one to the right, as the 7. Now let's round our second number. Well, crossed out a 6, so that 4 goes up by 1 to 5. The 4 was in the hundreds column, so so must be the 5. Now watch what I do. I do 8 times 5 is 40. How many zeros have I got in my question? Um, zeros that is following a, a non-zero number. I've got two. So my answer needs another two zeros. There's one other thing we've got to check. How many figures are after the decimal point? One is after the decimal point. So my answer needs one figure after the decimal point. So the answer is 400.0 or 400. Remember, if there's nothing after the decimal point other than zeros, we ignore the decimal point. Right, I'm going to give you five now to practice. Let's see how you do. Right, so now you copy them down. I'll give you a few moments, a few minutes probably, fairly involved, to answer these, then we'll go through the answers. So press the video on pause. Okay, welcome back. Let's go through questions six to ten. First thing we do is round. So, oh, we crossed out an eight here. So the one become, the figure we keep goes up by one. And it was in the tens column, so we had a zero here. Times. Get rid of all the others. The first figure I crossed out was a 4, so the 3 doesn't change, but it was in the tens column. And now we do. 2 times 3 is 6. Oops, prefer to write in blue. It's 6. Now, how many zeros did I have in that question? I had 2 here, so I add 2 zeros. So the approximate answer is 600. Let's go through question 7. So I'm going to round that. The first figure I crossed out was a 1, so the 6 doesn't change. But the 6 was in the hundreds column, so I add two zeros times. Let's round 72. Do I change it? No, I don't, because I crossed out a 2 first. But the 7 was in the tens column, so I add a 0. Now we do the multiplication. 6 times 7 is 42. And in this question, I've got a total of 1, 2, three zeros. So I add three zeros. So the approximate answer is 42,000. Let's go through question eight. First I round it, so I'm going to just keep the first non-zero figure, get rid of the others. So that becomes 60. 
The reason I didn't make the 6 any bigger is because I crossed out a 2. Divided by, what are around 38 to? Well, here I cross out an 8. So the 3 goes up by 1. Now I write it as a fraction, 60 over 40. I cancel, 0 on the top, 0 on the bottom. So I get 6 over 4. There's a common factor here, a common factor of 2. So it becomes 3 over 2, or 1 and a half. Right, question 9. Let's have a look. Let's round this. That becomes 800. The reason being is because the first figure I crossed out was a 5, so the sum becomes one bigger. What about round 22? 2. Well, I got rid of a 2 here, so that 2 doesn't change, so I get 20. So I'll now write it as a fraction. 800 over 20. I cancel a 0 on the top, 0 on the bottom, to give me 80 over 2. The highest common factor, as in our early example, is 2. To give 40 over 1, or 40. Now, a last one. Right, let's go through this. First, we round it. So I'm going to keep that 4, get rid of the others. I got rid of a 1 first, so the 4 doesn't change. But the 4 needs to be in the hundreds column, so let's add two zeros. Now, what about this? 0.36. So I get rid of that figure there. The 6 that I got rid of, the first figure I got rid of, means, because the rule is this, that if the first figure cross out is 5 or more, it makes this figure go up by 1. Notice how I don't have to add any other figures. That's um, 4 is in the same place as the 3. It's immediately after the decimal point. Now I do my calculation. 4 times 4, 16. How many zeros have I got in the question? Whoops. I've got one, two zeros following um, non-zero numbers. So I add two zeros. How many figures are after the decimal point? One. So my answer needs one figure after decimal point. So the answer is 160.0 or 160. Thank you for listening. I hope you got those last uh, four or five questions correct. Well done.